Vivian Vance's first meeting with Lucille Ball did not go well. You don't look like a landlady, observed Lucy, who expected someone older, heavier, and much less attractive than the former Broadway showgirl. Lucy also viewed Vivian with suspicion because her playboy husband, Daisy Arnaz, had hired Vivian without consultation. Despite this awkward start, Lucy and Vivian would go on to become one of America's most beloved female comedy teams. Their 28-year personal friendship would also see them through mental illness, domestic abuse, traumatic divorces, and worldwide TV stardom. We're just like sisters, gushed Vivian. We adored each other's company. Lucy's frosty attitude began to thaw once she realized that Vivian was willing to do anything to make I love Lucy great. Even gain weight bleach her hair and wear frumpy clothing to play Ethel Mertz. Lucy's heart also warmed when she realized how nervous Vivian was about taping before a live audience. As they grew closer, Vivian confided in Lucy about her upbringing and ongoing mental health struggles. Growing up, Vivian had often clashed with her mother, May, a religious fanatic who suffered from emotional collapses. Unfortunately, her mother's prediction came true in 1945 when Vivian was touring with the play The Voice of the Turtle. Recalled Vivian, who sought psychiatric help. Despite the prevailing taboos about discussing mental health in those days, Vivian became a lifelong advocate for therapy and emotional wellness. At the start of their friendship, Vivian was wed to her third husband, Phil Ober, an actor. Eventually, Lucy got involved. One day Viv came to work with a shiner. That did it. Lucy thinks she said to Vivian, if you don't divorce him, she will. Vivian ended the marriage in 1959 and repaid the favor by supporting Lucy during her breakup with Daisy. We've been through a lot together. Two husbands, two divorces, Lucy admitted. Vivian followed Lucy to The Lucy Show, which ran from 1962 to 1968. She refused to even consider being in a continuing series without Vivian, said Lucille, who came to rely on her friend's comic sensibilities. If something in the script wasn't working, those two ladies would put their heads together and figure it out, recalls Lucy's former assistant Wanda Clark. But eventually, Vivian, who married her fourth husband, John Dodds, an East Coast-based book editor, in 1961, found commuting to L.A. too tiring. She asked for a reduced role on The Lucy Show and made only guest appearances on Lucy's third sitcom, Here's Lucy. But the friends stayed in touch, and when Lucy assembled the cast members for her 1977 TV special, Lucy Calls the President, Vivian was among them. It would be their final TV performance together. Vivian was complaining of not feeling well, and Lucy told her to see a doctor, Michael Stern, author of I Had a Ball, My Friendship with Lucille Ball. That's how Vivian found out she was sick. Vivian had been treated for breast cancer years earlier, but it had spread to her bones. Lucy traveled to her bedside twice before she passed away in 1979 at age 1970. They spent the afternoon telling stories, hugging and loving each other. When Lucy left, you could tell it was an extraordinarily painful goodbye. Lucy never got over Vivian's passing. No one could take the place of Vivian Vance in her life. Vivian was the greatest partner anyone could ever have. 